Hey everybody, welcome to day three of the 40 day challenge. So once again, just to reiterate what was discovered yesterday, um, if you guys are getting, when you check your blood glucose, that little magnifying glass at the top with the blood drop, that's questioning your blood glucose reading. So that was, that's what was going on with me. So when I looked back at my data, I think the first five days, it was all pretty normal, like pretty much exactly what I would expect. I did have that one meal I already shared with you guys, um, that big meal at the Indian restaurant and my blood glucose went, went way up to 150. And that was, you know, the non, the, the white rice, the purposely overeating. And then when I just did my normal eating, my blood glucose wouldn't go much more than about 118 to 120. And that was consistent for about five days. Then I noticed for the next seven days that my blood glucose was getting really low and I didn't change anything. And um, to the point where I'm like, geez, you know, am I this hypoglycemic? Well, it turns out I was had, there's something going on with the monitor at that point and it was persistent. So what you guys need to check is when you, excuse me, when you manually check your blood glucose, make sure that that magnifying glass with the blood drop is not there. If it is, it is questioning the accuracy of the blood glucose. So that's why I said yesterday, just get a finger prick monitor and you can check your blood glucose that way. Now, we're, you don't have to do this a hundred times. We're going to do very specific um, experiments over time, over the next 12 days. So it's not like this is, will be a huge inconvenience. You'll do it once a day over the next 12 days. But what I want everybody to make sure that they do have is what is your blood glucose when you wake up in the morning? And hopefully none of you have changed anything. Um, you know, you can make changes in your blood glucose pretty quickly, you know, certainly over a few weeks. And depending on how bad the situation is, definitely within a couple of months. Most of you, I'm guessing, are gonna be in the low hundreds. Some of you will be in the upper 90s. The problem is, is of the 20 of us doing this, the people that really need to do it aren't doing it, right? Because they already know that they're horrible. The 20 that are doing it, most of you are really relatively healthy. So, um, you know, you're, you're always preaching to the choir, unfortunately. But regardless of that situation, you will see that we're going to improve your, your blood glucose. We're going to improve that response of that whole system um, by implementing a few strategies. So first thing is most important, if you're not getting the accurate blood glucose in the morning, if you're getting that magnifying glass with the blood droplet, then prick your finger, get it manually done. Next is try to get a reading 30 minutes after your first meal. So whatever you eat for normally for breakfast, Get a reading about a half an hour, get a reading about an hour later, and then reading about two hours later. If you, if you have to do this manually, just do it one day, just do it 30 minutes, do it the next day, you could do an hour, and then um, the third day you could do it two hours later. But we just wanna get an idea of what is your blood glucose doing within that two hour window of your first meal. And then what we'll do is we'll do things for, um, midday dinner and cheat meals if you're doing cheat meals things of that nature i just want you guys to get a spectrum of what's happening over time hopefully your blood glucose monitor is working consistently if not just do it with the finger prick the first thing i want to address is just understanding when we talked uh, with mike t nelson or when i talked with mike t nelson one of the things I wanted you guys to understand is how long this takes to go awry. And once it goes awry, it can become difficult to understand what's going on when it comes to insulin. Right now, like I said, we have this one measure of blood glucose. So we don't know where your insulin is. People that are insulin resistant, the, the classic marker if you have blood work is if your LDL is really high and your HDL is very, very low, that's a sign of, of insulin resistance. Now, it's not the only sign, it could mean other things, HDL is also very genetic, but if you, if you recognize that 
as blood glucose goes up acutely, so at a meal, insulin will go up precipitously, right? But the problem is, is that you can have acute overfeeding and you can have a feed, you know, overfeeding over time, which is most Americans. That's how you get overweight. So when you're looking at a body that's 30, 40, 50, 100 pounds overweight, that is longitudinal overfeeding. And that's what causes this problem of hypo, excuse me, a hyperglycemia. And the pancreas is gonna keep releasing insulin. Eventually, the pancreas is gonna go, holy cow, like we're, there's no more signaling, right? There, there, there's the, the, literally the insulin will not drive any more glucose into the cell, why? Because it's like a wet sponge. You can't put more water into the wet sponge. So you have all this circulating blood glucose and insulin in the bloodstream and you create a signaling problem with the pancreas. So now, eventually over time, that insulin uh, starts to come back down and you see the blood glucose stay elevated. That becomes the problem. The, the thing is, is that if in fact you are elevated, so you're at 102, 105, first thing in the morning, you're trending that direction. That sponge is getting very wet and we wanna to start to wring that sponge out. So one of the things that I want you guys to recognize, you know, it's a very, sounds simple, but just the, the mere um, actions of doing the things that you need to do to lose weight will be helpful. And one of the most important things that we've talked about in the past is to make sure that at every single meal, you have protein present in the meal. Okay, so once you guys get a baseline of what is my normal breakfast, what is my normal lunch, what is my normal dinner, what I want you to start doing is, are you doing UTC 101? Is there protein present at every meal? Now, what does protein mean? That's not one egg, right? Protein, if you recall, remember, not to uh, go into too much detail about you know the UTC and everything, but we did container approaches, right? So we wanna make sure that there's actually container worth of protein um, now you can spread that out, right? So you can have five meals in a day. And I explained in that interview how and why, when you want to build muscle, spreading protein out throughout the day is a very good idea, right? So if you're eating only one meal a day that has one particular health benefit, if you're trying to build muscle, eating about five meals that have about equal portions of protein in it is a much better approach to um, to anabolism, to creating an anabolic effect in muscle. So the first change I want you to make, if you're not already, is making sure you're getting adequate protein. So if you're getting, for men, if you're getting, uh, if you're gonna eat five small meals in a day, that's about um, a half to two thirds of a container of protein at each meal. That sounds challenging, but if you start doing that, you're going to notice you're more satiated and that it's harder to overeat for all of the reasons I've described in past seminars. I'm not gonna go into all of the reasons why again, right? Because I already went through that stuff. But that's your first challenge is to make sure each meal you say, where's my protein and is it enough? For women, that's two containers a day. So you're talking about you know one third to one half of a container five times a day. All right, so start there guys. And uh, if you're having any issues with your blood glucose monitor or you know, the finger pricks or anything else, let me know. But like I said, fasting glucose first thing in the morning, your first meal, check it half an hour, then an hour, then two hours later. Try to do it um, for breakfast, try to do it for lunch, try to do it for dinner. If you have to do it manually, you can spread it off over time. But once you get your baseline, start adding protein at each meal. And then I want you to notice what effect it has on your blood glucose. It does, it will have an effect, you won't believe it. You'll notice that you have less spike and you'll notice that what we'll, what we'll talk about is what's called time under the curve will improve. All right guys, keeping it to under 10 minutes. Have a good rest of the day.